Chow. Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. Dr. Bin, thank you so much for inviting NVIDIA to be part of this very uh, important uh, event, APT Tech Day 2024. So it's my pleasure to uh, share some of the thoughts on NVIDIA. Uh, and to begin, I would like to share a little bit about uh, NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is a company that uh, was found, founded by Jensen Huang. He's a co-founder, he's also our chairman, CEO, in 1993. And in 1995, we created the first GPU, right? And we created the first GPU essentially for gaming. And over the years, the GPU that has been used for gaming has evolved into the engine of computation for things like high-performance computing, for things like simulation, engineering research. And of course, very recently, it has also evolved to support AI. So if you look at the history of GPUs, in the last decade, GPU has actually has a speed up of more than one million times in the last 10 years. And in the next five, five years, we believe that the evolution and the transformation of the GPU will continue, and it will have at least 10,000 times speed up. So this is actually very timely, because if you look at where we are today in the IT industry, we are at a crossroad. We are now looking at a new era of computing, that is supported by accelerated computing from NVIDIA, and also, of course, generative AI. So if you look at how NVIDIA is putting our technology platform together, it starts with the GPU. So the GPU is the foundation today that helps to accelerate applications and workloads for the future in the modern era of computing, right? And it is very exciting that if you look at the, what NVIDIA has done over the last 10, 15 years, it's actually been incredible in the fact that we have actually developed the best technology platform for the new era of computing, right? So if you can see on the screen, starting from GPUs, we have the Blackwell, we have the Gray CPU, and we are also bringing in other critical components that will help to pioneer and continue to accelerate the technology which we call accelerated computing, including, for example, the, in, the, uh, the chips for networking. So besides the chips for computation, whether it's Gray CPU or the Blackwell GPU, we are also putting together high-speed interconnects for example, the Quantum 3, which is based on InfiniBand, very high speed. And we also have the Ethernet version, also very high speed, which we call Spectrum X. So as you can see, we're laying the foundation, putting all these very high performance chips together in a system that is connected for scale. So the technology that we believe will help to scale in the modern era of computing will be like the NVLink. So NVLink allows you to combine many, many GPUs together such that it becomes very seamless in doing your AI modeling. And it allows you to scale. For example, in the, in the recent case, you may have heard XAI. Right? XAI actually put together 100,000 GPUs using accelerated computing. Right? And today, we can, the building blocks can allow you to build very scalable systems, and they can be water-cooled, Right, to take in, into account the, power, the increasing power consumption of GPUs with water cooling, and it can also do air cooling. So you have options for both. And on top of that, you can also see that accelerated computing is not just the hardware, but we have built, because we believe that accelerated computing is a full stack challenge. And therefore, besides the extremely high performance systems, we are also putting together an accelerated software stack to accelerate your application workload. And on top of that, we also built libraries. So NVIDIA has built 
based on our CUDA API, we have built 500 all these libraries to help acceleration in many areas. So one of the more popular one is CUDNN, which is to accelerate your AI development. And also, we are all building for the enterprise a platform called the NVIDIA AI for Enterprise, NVAIE, which allows you for any enterprise to take advantage of the full stack to develop your application models from data ingestion, data training, to AI model training, to deployment, all the way. The full stack is available today on NVAIE. And then we are also developing a platform which is very important for our modern world, which is Omniverse, which will cater to the development of physically sound uh, development of uh, what we call digital twins. So you can develop digital twins using our physics, using our uh, libraries to make sure that it replicates, the simulation actually replicates the physical world. So all these platforms come together as part of an integrated uh, accelerated computing technology platform. And of course, if you look at the, uh, the top left, we have the CUDA libraries, as I mentioned. Yeah, so anyway, this is the, uh, uh, what we're trying to do. And we have the CUDA libraries. CUDA libraries are essentially addressing vertical markets. So you can take the libraries and then form them into application framework that can address specific industries. One example, for example, is the Clara, right? So Clara is an application framework based on the two sets, the CUDA libraries that we put together, pre-trained models that can deliver medical AI. So for example, you can do medical imaging, you can do genomics research and all that. Another example is of our application framework is Metropolis. So Metropolis is a framework that allows you to do things like uh, video, video language management or models. You can do things like video analytics to do smart city projects, right? So the list goes on. So you can see that uh, it's extremely versatile. Now, the next point I want to make is that um, with the confluence of the two technology, accelerated computing plus generative AI, we are seeing the start of a new industrial revolution. So it's a very, very exciting time, right? And when you talk about industrial revolution, then obviously, how do you support that industry? You need factories. So we have coined a term for the new age, for this new industrial revolution, AI factories. Right? So AI factories is going to bring the ability of systems to generate a new kind of product. And this product is not physical. This product is actually what we call digital intelligence. So the, for the first time in computing, after 40 years of IT, for the first time, a computer can generate something totally new that is of good intelligence, of good context, and very useful to you, whether you're the government or whether you're the enterprise and so on. That makes it very exciting. But you will not be able to do this digital intelligence without AI factories. So we believe that AI factory is going to be the future. And if you look at the next five, 10 years, we believe that there are going to be an investment of at least $2 trillion of investments into data center. And these data centers will be AI data centers, and these data centers will be housing AI factories. So that is the direction. And you also have a legacy $1 trillion of data, data centers that will have to be upgraded to support this new industrial revolution, to support this new era of computing. So if you look at all this, it's really a very exciting time, right? Sorry. And uh, we believe that the industrial, the industrial revolution will power, will help to power and help $100 trillion value, uh, valuation of the top enterprises to adapt to this new, new world by embracing generative AI, right? Whether they're in manufacturing, in telco and FSI, 
the opportunity is really immense, right? $100 trillion of valuation of companies out there that will be served by these AI factories. So we're really very excited that uh, we have the opportunity working with companies, forward-looking visionary companies like FPT to build the kind of AI factory that will take Vietnam to the next decades of uh, you know, advancement and being able to help the ecosystem here, whether they are the government or the enterprises, to leverage this. Yeah, so the next point I want to make is on sovereign AI. So sovereign AI, governments are now becoming very interested to look at sovereign AI. So what is sovereign AI? So sovereign AI is not just the infrastructure, like AI factories, but sovereign AI is really a way to use AI factories to develop AI models that is sovereign, all right? Which means that the workloads that you develop will use your own data, your own local data, country data. You will use your own language. You will use the models will be trained to understand Vietnamese uh, you know, across the board and fine-tuned, models will be fine-tuned that continues to support the growth of culture, the growth of language, and all this within the country. So it's a very important endeavor. And again, I'm very happy to uh, announce that you know, FPT Smart Cloud is going to be our sovereign cloud partner. So we'll be working very closely to support FTT Smart Cloud to, de to help deliver some of the very critical sovereign AI workloads, be it for local emergency services, for healthcare, to promote optimal performance of local companies. And again, so it's a very, very exciting time. What's next, right? So we know generative AI, AI factories, all very exciting. So what's next? So we believe the next chat GPT moment is really for, which is coming using generative AI, is really for robotics. And these robotics are what we call humanoid robotics, right? So to do that, NVIDIA has actually started a, a project called Project Growth. It's an NVIDIA lab initiative that is helping to look at developing general purpose uh, model, robotics models, general purpose models, technology and tools to accelerate humanoid robotics. Right? So we believe that uh, uh, you know, any, for example, any makers of humanoids, hardware, software, developers, please come and join us to help develop this next phase of the ChatGPT moment when we have humanoids amongst us. So in NVIDIA, we believe that this is a three-computer problem. Right? You need three computers to do this. The first computer is an AI computer that develops the model. So you can run it on the factory, you can run it on systems like DGX. The second, the second uh, AI computer, it's a, a, a simulation. So you can actually use the AI in software physically correct to train the robots in a simulated environment. For example, you can train a robot in a simulated kitchen, kitchen on how to you know, cook and all that. It's just an example. And then you also have a third AI computer, which is really a computer that is uh, based in a Jetson Tor computer that is actually placed into the robots. Right? And that computer will help to accelerate the uh, runtime of the robots as they are trained. So it's a three computer model that NVIDIA is envisaging to build the next chat GPT moment. And this again is going to contribute and drive industrial, the, the, to add to the industrial revolution. Basically, uh, changing the whole landscape that we, know, that we know today, right? Very different from today. And that's coming very soon. So with that, I just want to conclude by sharing a video, uh, talk a bit about the humanoid. So please enjoy the video. Please roll the video. The era of physical AI is here. Physical AI, models that can understand and interact with the physical world will embody robots. Many will be humanoid robots. Developing these advanced robots is complex, requiring vast amounts of data and workload orchestration across diverse computing infrastructures. 
NVIDIA is working to simplify and accelerate developer workflows with three computing platforms. NVIDIA AI, Omniverse, and Jetson Thor, plus generative AI-enabled developer tools. To accelerate Project Root, a general humanoid robot foundation model, NVIDIA researchers capture human demonstrations, seeing the robot's hands in spatial overlay over the physical world. They then use RoboCasa, a generative simulation framework integrated into NVIDIA Isaac Lab to produce a massive number of environments and layouts. They increase their data size using Mimic Gen Nim, which helps them generate large-scale synthetic motion data sets based on the small number of original captures. They train the Groot model on NVIDIA DGX Cloud with the combined real and synthetic data sets. Next, they perform software in the loop testing in Isaac Sim in the cloud and hardware in the loop validation on Jetson Thor before deploying the improved model to the real robots. NVIDIA Osmo Robotics Cloud Compute Orchestration Service manages job assignment and scaling across distributed resources throughout the workflow. Together, these computing platforms are empowering developers worldwide to bring us into the age of physical AI-powered humanoid robots. So with that, thank you very much for your attention. Have a great event.